Hi, I'm Seamless, and this is the 27th, maybe? 28th? 27th. Um, 30k tutorial, and this is the thing I made. This, uh, is, okay, this is an attempt at a recreation of the sound that was made by Morph Tech, which was inspired by a sound made by Billen. Billane, Billen. Um, maybe it's Billen. I've been told it's Billen. Anyway, point being, um, this was originally supposed to be a Billen Reese, and then it was a thing, a thing done by Morph Tech. Now, here's the th fun thing about the thing done by Morph Tech, is that, um, the source of this is a video that he put up on Facebook, and if you go to the original link in the description, you'll find it, and you can actually see a whole bunch of what's going on with his setup that he's created. Of course, his setup is just a little bit more complex, and it actually was pretty pretty neat looking, especially because like he, he appeared to have a bunch of things like LFO speeds and pitch and whatever, and other filtery business linked to various XY controllers that he was controlling live, and that was um, pretty impressive looking. From my end and what i did was not really that complex but i did do some neat things and i actually discovered something cool that you can do in regards to ring modulation and citrus which is what this is the source of you might be noticing I do, i've been doing a lot of, of this recently a lot of ring modulation and citrus, citrus business so citrus business because i, I dig it and i think it's kind of cool now, this is a non-resampled sound, which is interesting. It's a Reese, and I didn't feel like resampling it. I actually didn't do it resampled because Morph Tech didn't resample it. And I wanted to see, especially because he's also using FL, I wanted to see, you know, how close I could get it doing with what I'm doing. I think he did a pretty good job redoing the Belaine, Belen bass on his, like, on his side. I don't think I did as good a job, but I think it's a pretty, pretty neat thing. Anyway, the beginning, the beginning of this sound is in Citrus. So operator one is being modulated by operator two with this wacky oscillator setup. Now, what I discovered about how the ring, this sort of ring modulated FM setup works is that you don't necessarily need to have something that makes sense in the uh, first FM slot, being the operator that's FMing the output operator, because the uh, tone of the sound, like the note, is going to be controlled by the operator in the third, the third operator in this case. So it's this set up with a half and even and uh, actually completely, this is totally a saw wave. It's up at the saw wave amount and there's a little bit of uh, uh, like a like sloping tension added there. And the phase is set slightly off. You know, the starting phase of, this, of the waveform is set. So if you were around for when the live streaming of these things did work and I was working on a, a particular sound before, um, I was demonstrating like how because someone wanted to know how you could control FM and RM individually, and my immediate response was, well, you control any of these by controlling the volume of an operator. However, I discovered in Citrus that if you control the volume of an operator or something that's just doing RM, the RM amount does not change. However, if you go to the mod input of, of an operator, then whatever's going in there, be it RM or FM, will change. And that's probably one thing I want to know is how I control individually as opposed to doing this result, which is to say. I can only control both of what's coming out of a single operator into, an, into another individual operator. So the reason why this is important is because I am actually changing how much RM is going into operator two with mod X. You can kind of see, you can kind of see it dipping, and this, uh, uh, well, basically, basically, let's uh, put the. So with the RM all the way on, it's real sharp, and then with the RM kind of brought off. It smooths out. As a direct modulation, it doesn't really sound very good, but when it's brought in with a bunch of other stuff, it kind of works out. It's actually rather badass, and it's kind of a unique sound that I haven't attempt I haven't created before. At least for me. So yes. Now the fourth oscillator is just a very, very slow oscillator, and this is controlling the the uh, well, what would we'll normally be a sine wave, but because this is a bandpass bass, I actually layered in another saw wave and com just completely saw wave. And this is being put out at the same pitch as the output oscillator, but it's not being FM'd or anything except for operator 4. And this is creating the kind of Reese movement. It's a result of operator 4 changing the pitch of the saw wave as it gets put out. And 
and that's cool. So that's going to a flangler, which I, I mean, I think about the thing about the flan, flanges in this particular instance and chorus plugins in general is that they are a sort of poor man's attempt at unison. And so this is to say that it's taking an audio input and it's messing around with it to the point where it almost sounds like unison. So that's what that's the point of having having these effects before or after distortion in the, in the Reese world is because it's like having unison. It's also why resampling is particularly cool because it means you can have real unison on actual audio. But um, so in this example, I have I have three uh, order three low depth, uh, low, minish speed, low delay, high spread, and cross. Now here's the thing about the crossover. The crossover basically determines the stereo width of the sound. <laughs> So I just kind of mess around with that. And then we can have the dry and wet mix, and this is just set to taste. Here, so then I have an EQ that's being the bandpass. I don't really know why I prefer doing it with EQ, but I do, so I do. And then I have another EQ just for color shaping. It's going into a wave shaper, which without it, this is what it sounds like. Still pretty similar, but not as crunchy. It's going into a Maximus. Now, here's some, here's some fun things that are going on with the Maximus. This is the compression waveform that I have going. Uh, yeah, the wave shaping. I'm using it as a wave shaper. Because you, as you see, I have all all of the time variables off for the high, except for the low and high delay, because I still want them on a little bit and low. But it's low enough that is the high frequencies are effectively being uh, wave shaped, as, as normal the way, normal wave shaper would work. Because the normal wave shaper and the way that the Maximus works is more or less the same, except that this has no no attack or release or any of that. But Maximus, you, you have an option of having an attack or release or any of that. So that's what I'm doing there. And it's doing weird things to the sound, and it's adding additional distortion onto the higher frequencies, which is what I wanted to do to give it that kind of... that. Um, fuzz on the on the top and i'm also spreading it hugely so that the fuzz is doing different things in the in you know the stereo image and good stuff like that the top master is just distorting it with a soft saturation and that's pretty much the end of it none shall pass what none shall pass that's what that, that's how that reminds me of anyway this project will be available in the description if you would like to make a request uh the request the link is in the description as well. Only make requests there. I will not read them anywhere else. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.